I wanted to try to bring together a few things that are going on at the moment and a couple of the things that I've brought up in the past and bringing them together to relate to how things may be getting sectioned off. Now I've started on Google Earth with a couple of overlays that I did. Um, these ones here about the rail stablings, the uh, high security mesh, the, the double rolls of razor wire uh, all facing in, the compounds that have been created and the one especially at uh, Rabina that had been, it's right near the hospital and the Rabina Stadium that's uh, Seabus Stadium it's currently called. I knew it as skilled back then. So there's another video on that if you wanted to know more about the compound structure of these railway dead end compounds. Yeah. So um, the point I'm trying to get at here was that after I had done that in Queensland, I thought, well, if it's been done in Queensland and it is one of these things that may have a sinister overtone to it, then perhaps I'm going to find it in the rest of the, you know, the states. But then I started looking at the states and realizing because I've not only um, lived and traveled uh, the, in most of these places and I know them, that they're different geography. And I soon realized that what worked that may be set up in Queensland to bring a population down to the southeast Queensland part onto the Gold Coast, around the Gold Coast area and contain it as a sort of mega city in a, in a Hunger Games scenario type thing, that um, the way that Queensland would achieve that is different than the way New South Wales or Victoria or Tasmania or any other places in Australia or the world would achieve that uh, because of culture, because of geography, uh, because of many factors and also existing infrastructure. A lot of these places you can't put in something because there's houses and industry and everything already covering the land so you've got to come up with a way that will essentially compound a larger area or herd people into that area that you can then contain them in. Now, when I did the video, they hadn't done what they'd done in Victoria. And I know that in Victoria, there are roads leading out of town that um, you, know, you can just disappear into. Others will take you into the mountains, but it's very wide open. And as you can see here, there's only the mountain ranges as you start to go up the coast of Australia. All this area over here is relatively open. So to contain a population in that scenario is a lot more difficult. And I wondered how they'd actually do it, being so open. Now they'd closed the borders, but that's only bringing, you know, closure around where that line is there. That's the border. So that's still containing a larger area that is uncontrollable. Now from watching um, videos on Sally Joseph's channel um, and people that are in Melbourne, uh, when they're saying that you can't get out to the Dandenongs anymore or out to the hills, they're gradually bringing in the blocks the, where you can travel to further and closer to the city so that they're gradually uh, from what she's describing see the network of roads so th they've gradually bought in the roadblocks in further and further towards the city to make it a smaller and smaller area of containment so that the resources they've got for the police and the army that they can 
bring people down into that smaller area because once you do get up into these mountainous areas um, they're sort of small people that are out maybe minding their own business they're not of big concern to you right now the majority of the population in the cities are you want people in the cities you know you're going to have your stragglers on the outskirts and you're not going to worry too much about them if they're little and that's why I started telling you about this because if you're a little concerned outside the borders of control they're not going to worry about you but if you're a larger concern of an alternative lifestyle that has been setting up and has got the ability and the desire to take on the government I mean essentially there's a place in northern New South Wales that people have just recently moved to are going to be buying into and because of the size of the concern and how well known these people are to the government police and everybody else they're going to be one of the first targets to bring down now I don't know if anybody remembers the Bundy um, ranch siege or even further back um, what's his name David Koresh he's his cult that he had going and the reason I'm bringing up these issues uh, they might not necessarily be the same things but it's a standoff of you know the individual against the force of the government when they want to come down on you and uh, when I talked to somebody about this uh, alternative community that I went to they actually asked me was it a cult so there is that kind of perception that the the way that um, well there are religious cults in these alternative communities in northern New South Wales so um, they exist and how a, a cult exists doesn't necessarily have to be because they're you know ultra ultra spiritual on some kind of focus I mean it can be any kind of spiritual group think orientation could even be classified as even tribal you know? anything that could be classified as a group think could be called cultish but before I get to that the reason that uh, I realized that if you are going to contain the major cities and implement Agenda 21 and bring people off the land and into the cities into a controllable area first of all back then you didn't know how they were going to do that well now we do know but the question is now that now they're pushing everybody into the cities and into a smaller area into the cities to control how are they going to maintain that control now in Queensland I could see that they could uh, I'm not going to explain on that one because I've already done it but I could see how they would control and confine and bring it all to the southeast Queensland and in Sydney I mean there's it's this it's surrounded by rivers and bridges you don't really think that too much but um, that's why I went round and I started highlighting where all these lines are that's a major river and that's another major river so ultimately I stopped because it was taking me ages and it was just proving the point to me that essentially all you've got to do is close off bridges and there's all of Sydney contained and uh, it would be a lot lot easier to contain than the open uh, Victoria Melbourne that doesn't have the rivers and the bridges that you can block off even as you go further into the city there's these are major rivers but they're also I've got another overlay I did you, you wouldn't be able to distinguish anything if I put it on but it because it just showed the level of bridges throughout uh, Sydney and how all it takes is for you know a cop car to block off there 
the issue of as you get closer into the city centre, the water canals are not as deep. I mean, you could you know walk across them if, but most of them are muddy, and a lot of them have got um, junk thrown in them. I mean, a lot of the places you walk around, you will look down into the creek and someone's thrown their shopping trolley and who knows what else, you know. There's, people are just, they're just pigs, some of them. And uh, so, you know, a lot of people are going to think twice about walking into the, the grey muddy water anyway because it's not clear. It's not like you see in the tourist brochures around the islands where it's crystal, crystal blue water. It's muddy, yucky looking water. You can't see in it and you don't know what's in the water. It's a very big risk to enter into something that you don't know, you can't see. So, I mean, from the video I did before on the train stablings, and what I said about how that was on a river as well, you don't know what they could have already stuck in the water. Imagine if there were rolls of razor wire and your feet hit them. <laughs> or you dived in and your face hit that. I mean, if you're going to be stupid enough to dive into muddy water you can't see and know how deep it is, well, you know, you weren't that smart in the first place. You've got to be smart in these times. So, um, you know, you can see that uh, Sydney and the larger part of the population of New South Wales isn't a big, big problem. And a lot in the country thanks to the bushfires this year, have been all burnt out and have probably sought refuge closer towards the city. So everything's starting to push everything towards the city centres. Although I did see a video of um, someone somewhere around in southeast Queensland yesterday. She's walking around the shopping centre. It's all normal. Yes, it is normal for now, but once... If they can implement the full actions of what they want to do in Victoria, everyone knows it's a test case. If they get it put in there, you're not going to be seeing anything like that ever again. You know, well, what we see in the future, what we create from the problems that humanity is facing right now will be a lot different. So we will never go back to the way that things have been. And let's face it, we don't want to. We don't want to go back to something that hasn't worked, that has brought us to this point. We need to rethink everything and reprioritize. We know what the government's priorities are. But anyway, that's um, a little bit of an overview of trying to bring this concept of um, getting people off the land, out of the country and into cities where they can be controlled. Now, if you're like this community I've talked about in past videos, the one I was at, is a relatively little one. There's three guys there. They pretty much have no one coming and I mean, no one there. People come and go, but they do exactly what I did, you know, that it if you don't fit into this rigid point of view that they've got, uh, a lot of them walk out because they just can't handle being dictated to. You know, they come there for freedom and they get other dictates put down to them by people that seriously, you know, that's an opinion you've got no right to enforce on someone. So he's not real. These three guys are not, well, these two guys now and whoever bought in with them are not really a concern because they're not influencing people and most of the people are not taking them seriously. And even though they are set up on their hill, they've already planned it, that you know, that the cops come in, you know, or the army or whatever, they know exactly what to do and how to deal with it. It's not going to be them thereafter. It's after one of their buddies, their community, where he came from, where they've built it, where there's been... Um, I've done the past videos on it and I've looked into the, the people involved 
And the thing is that, you know, when you set up a system as both of these, well, they ended up as one community. They were the same thing. They just, different members that could not be identified, could not get funding. So basically another member got funding and set up through different names, but it was all the same people and the same things involved, but you can't prove it in court. Now I can do a video where I can even show it coming out of their wor words out of their mouth. This is exactly what they've set it up so that you cannot be searched and held accountable for it. So if you cannot be searched, that means that they cannot be searched. If they're completely anonymous, you're completely anonymous within this discretionary trust. You've got no hope of proving that the people associated with it are associated with the same thing that's going on. It's just that they scam people through this thing that fell apart. So they renamed it and put other people out the front, even though one of the same people is still involved right out there at the front. AB, yeah, AB. AB's a pretty big developing linchpin connecting the two together. And even doing searches on the judgments that came through that he mentioned. Um, it names a lot of different companies and I did company searches. And one thing is for sure, when you look at an, a, a business registry and the name changes from Bulla Bulla to Nightcap, you know that they are one and the two. They're the same thing. And even though that's the only thing that connects that Bulla Bulla then was named by the same people. This is a re registered business. So the structure that they'd set up was to hide the people that own the businesses. And I will do a video on that because they explain it. And once they explained how they set it up, the companies that were mentioned and the individuals mentioned within the judgment documents, I was able to discover how they had set up so that the same people can be involved with different companies, but they're still all the same people. You see, when you're living on the land, it doesn't matter what's written down on paper somewhere. You know, you know, that it's all the same people they're doing that thing you know it didn't work under that so they they renamed it and they they're representing it as this it's all the same people now one thing i didn't describe very well in past videos was i talked about the acquiring of land and you know how they want to set up communities and everything but it didn't actually say how they get the land now a, a large Par, um, number of them identify a parcel of land that they know a farmer or you know it's still a large farming parcel and they do a little bit of investigation they go down and find out with who the lands you know owned by they they may do a little checking on their do they have family members that they could leave the land to or you know do they live on their own what kind of a person they are so that when they go and approach that person and say well look um, do you want to sell your land essentially what is set up from a lot of these starting out is a rent buy situation now when I moved into this community it was in the renting part of the buying what they had done is approached the owner. The owner did have children. He had built the house that uh, was on this land, but he wasn't living there anymore. He'd built it for his wife. Uh, they had lived in the house at the bottom, and he built the house up on top of the hill for his wife, and she died of cancer. So he moved away from the area and moved on to other land that he had. And the kids that they had, they've pretty much got their own properties. They're not going to move back to the land. And he didn't know what to do with the land. Now, because of the emotional connection that these 
boys that set up this community had to the land with the, the Smith namesake and everything. They were able to convince this farmer that, you know, they they wanted all these things to to achieve all these things and that they would honour the land and you know, because the farmer didn't want to just leave it so it could be split up and like so many of them turned into subdivisions and the land is just wasted. So they agreed. There was a five year contract set up that each month they would Oh, it was in the thousands, I'm not quite sure. I think it was at least $2,000 a month they had to pay um, for the next five years. And as part of that too, they were also um, given the right to seek council approval for developments. And I mean, essentially, in that rent buy period, that five year period, they were given full legal rights to start developing start seeking council approval, start doing all the different things to and to treat it as if it was your own. And within the terms of that contract, as with any contract, you can put in stipulations. In this particular contract, there were certain stipulations about allowing for the grazing of a certain number of cattle to stay there. Um, and that was the only condition I actually knew of. I mean, I never saw the, the actual contract. I heard them talk about it plenty of times. And I heard them stressing out plenty of times over, you know, not being able to pay that money each month. But eventually they did get through the five years and they were able to then um, take up uh, the offer that is then offered at that rent by period that everything you pay goes to the purchase price which was agreed on in the first place and you just fork over the rest of the balance of the purchase price and then you own the land and that's how they bought um, Ganyawe I do believe they've actually purchased the land now it's in their it's no, no longer under contract under a rent buy. So when you hear talk about this other community that has been setting up at the same time and they've also set up some kind of a rent buy deal, I dare say, with not only the registered owners and title holders of the land but also tribal communities as well, and uh, they've also taken on, I believe, crown aspects of saying, well, basically, we're reclaiming this under tribal because it was never yours to take in the first place. So this whole area here centred around Wollumbin, Mount Warning, where this community had set up, it has come to be quite a big concern. And recently another person has been promoting to counteract the bad press that came out and said, well, that's all been fixed now. And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, even though she was offered her money back five times in court. Okay, one, I had a problem with that. If she had been offered her money back five times in court, the judge would have ordered that she take it and she's got no money she would have taken it so five times in court that open court she was offered her money back well offered her money back this came out of the the mouth of the person that is currently operating it why would you offer money back to her five times now, maybe i misunderstood what he said but again i didn't because I know that from living in this area that, you know, I do know that the guy that I know is attached to this bigger community now, he came round to it a couple of times and I didn't listen too much. There was a lot of dramas going on in the community. There was a lot of fighting and what I didn't realise is that that was all part of the court case that was about to come through about what was going on and these accusations about how it was a scam. I mean, this woman has, and there's people that have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars 
and they're not getting them back and these people the same people but you can't prove that they're the same people because they're set up behind a discretionary trust where they're anonymous so you cannot legally prove that the same people did it to you all oh, they've protected themselves and when they say they spent four and a half years going over the the bylaws and everything to protect themselves it's not only to protect themselves but to screw you over too they can bloody well screw you over and their eighty thousand dollar or a hundred and twenty thousand dollar buy-in has now gone up to three hundred thousand and not over four hundred lots but over eight hundred lots so they're sitting up on a big concern over 800 lots 300,000 each there's talk of um, like I, why you would want to put in sealed roads in these areas to know that they're only going to get chewed up and need to be replaced very quickly anyway it costs a thousand dollars a million dollars for a kilometer of road they want to put in 28 kilometers of road and it's just going to cost 28 million dollars just to put in roads that you're going to need to repair on a regular basis anyway so to get that in place they need at least you know 10 to 20 people to buy in to start to get these things moving and who are these people well the thing is that you will only ever be allowed to be introduced to a certain number and once they've approved you that you meet their criteria and you're allowed in you will find out who the other members are and even when you find out who the other members are you cannot prove it because they're hiding behind a discretionary trust so you cannot prove that it cannot be searched from the outside and if it cannot be searched from the outside to find out who's behind it you cannot also if you are on the inside and you have problems you can't prove you had problems with any of those people what people they're anonymous you cannot know who they are and this was deliberately set up in one video I watched uh, it was a very big um, selling point you know you become anonymous and then you know belittles the fact of well you know if you put aside the sinister part when you go to the, your accountant and solicitor and you explain it this way they'll go oh yeah I get it now it's like oh yeah I get it you just one salesman to a another salesman to another salesman is the public face of selling what is going to end up being for some people it will be ideal because they can live in a bubble and they can live within the same mentality and mindset because they've got the same mentality and mindset but if you are a free thinker and seriously I don't want to touch too much on how people are so prejudice and it's not from white people white people were not taught and this comes from their words we were taught to hate white fellas and they do they do you go to Nimble and sometimes you can see just how much you're just walking down the street and some drunk comes along and starts off and yeah I mean a lot of people don't even worry about them it's just yeah it happens too often and the hatred that hatred is there now we're at the top house um, the community I was in there was the top house that had the three boys in it and there was a bottom house that had their tribal friends in there and when they had the falling out Wow that was interesting seeing you know oh I've got more rights because my ancestors come from here and ah uh, it's like you're all wrong you are all wrong and they go around calling people coconuts I tell you what they were the biggest coconuts I've ever seen 
pretending to be something they're not. I'm just so over the colour divide. And it's existing not because white people are keeping it there, but because black people are saying, we are taught to hate white people. This is what I'm told. This is, they've got no respect, none for us. We are good to use and that's it. And if you move to one of these communities and you make, you know, if you've got the honour of finally being accepted into the tribe, that's because you're in sync with their mindset. You've given up your own. Because if you have your own mindset, oh, you can't know how to be connected to the land because you are white. Well, I never brought up the fact that I, my grandmother was part of the stolen generation to any of them because I'm not going to make colour an issue. I'm not going to argue about it. You know, as far as I'm concerned, an asshole is an asshole. I don't care what colour you come in. I'm going to avoid you. And I'm also going to call you out on it before I do that. So, you know, you want to be a fake full of shit? I don't care what colour you come in. You're going to hear it from me. And seriously, I know that uh, one person is really promoting this community right now. Victoria has been set up as a compound state. And there are a few stragglers in the hills that are only going to be worried about if they're of concern, if they're large enough. And this community, this large community that they, that has just started advertising, you know, for their $300,000 and over 800 lots, are going to offer you something that is really appealing. But I also have to remind you that uh, when you set up apart from something, if that something has paid enough attention to you, which it has. One of these guys has been doing it for years, going to the Supreme Court, the High Court. He's been challenging sovereign rights. I mean, he, he is the biggest pain in the ass to the Australian government and the legal system. He is well known. So if you're banded around him right now, you've got a target on your back just like him. Because one of the first things is they're going to take you you out to make sure that no one thinks that there is anywhere that they can escape to in the country that they have to go where they heard them to. Now take a good look here that this Mount Warning where they've set up right this is all national park all around here that goes over into Queensland there. Now I know currently that they've got border crossings um, closed and yet I know people are going between Queensland and New South Wales. I know this. I've heard it in videos where I know someone's living in Queensland. They say they've been down to this community. Now, they don't actually say it's in New South Wales, but I know it's in New South Wales, okay? So they had to cross the border. And how did they get across the border? Well, there's lots of little border crossings across along those ranges. But there's also... A very big reason why I don't think anyone's going to get away with it unless it's something that is hiding behind sovereign or native title where they're not technically supposed to be there. It doesn't mean that they can't be, but yeah, in the grand scheme of things, just up the road here, no, oh, zoomed out too far. Here's Canungra. Now, the Canungra is uh, Army Base Central. It is the communications headquarters uh, for the military in Australia. The, that whole, this whole area here where you can see the road going through the middle, I'll just bring it up a bit better. This whole mountainous region is army. You drive through army land there, you're not supposed to get out and wander off because um, they do fire live rounds, you could get shot. Down the end here is a firing range. You can actually see the target. 
and across there's a bit of a park and there's a tree there too it's called the hanging tree because a lot of people actually hang themselves there it's a it's sad it's not a very nice place so they um, conduct all their uh, exercises and training and over here you can see that's all their housing you can't get into that that's all cut off you've got to um, show a pass to get in so there's a fairly big um, army reserve to protect the border that is just across here you've got well trained people in that kind of terrain I actually don't see them leaving too many places across the border open they would know they're there just as well as I do and, and others do and, and even that there's bush walking tracks across the, the border so they would be monitoring all of those whether they're doing it now or not um, just depends on the level of restrictions that are in place when stricter border um, controls come in they will bring in the military and so whoever um, however way this person has been going from uh, this area crossing the border over into to go down to this community um, it won't be always open and even if they think they're getting away with it now I guarantee you they've been monitored number plates have been registered facial ID and movement and activities are being monitored and if I can do that just from watching the videos that are out there surely those that have got a more vested interest in it can actually learn more because I can figure out that also this other guy has um, been moving back and forward between the borders no, no restrictions no justifications no no one's stopping him thinking that you know <laughs> I've beat the man I'm smarter than him well I'm looking at aerial surveillance right now satellites there's thousands of them around the planet if you seriously think that you are anonymous and that they don't know who you are and where you are oh come on you need to burst that little bubble it's not reality so I wanted to bring this stuff up to people because I'm really concerned that people are going to go from <laughs> well not only South East Queensland but um, Victoria as well I've heard people one person commented that they'd moved from Victoria last year to northern New South Wales and I asked the comment um, was it to this area of course you know people just leave random comments and they never ever respond back to you they just want to have their say but that's um, I assume that either they bought land in this beautiful area or they went into a community so they went all the way from Victoria to northern New South Wales because this is the known area so if they can know it in Victoria and New South Wales and Queensland it's going to be a mecca a mecca for people wanting to take up a different sovereignty under different rules and conditions and as I've said you're going to be a target I guarantee you they're watching the cops, the military, satellites everything they're doing all these people that they think they're unnamed because they're hidden behind a discretionary trust oh come on you've all got cars you've all got driver's licenses and you like to say about how you don't like to give up your your rights in the Australian world too so you'd have Medicare cards and I know half of them are on the dole So, you know, don't know who you are? Oh, yes, they do. There's a hundred ways to trace you. Just because they can't prove in a court of law that you're behind the same group of people 
ripped off this pe bunch of people are now setting up here because it all failed and you're just going to say well we all lost money but you're the ones coming out on top with this multi-million dollar property and business enterprise and enterprises too that are set up that how can they claim to be non-profit when they're wrecking in the profits of all the businesses and they even say in the community promo video that um, you'll get paid to do jobs so if you're getting paid to do, do jobs that means you're earning an income which also means they're earning an income to actually pay you money so ultimately saying it's non-profit that's why ATSIC investigated them but because everything's hidden behind this discretionary trust and they could and they'd set it up in a confusing manner deliberately and they've even bragged about how deliberately it's been set up they'll never figure it out how to get to us well that does have a flip side you can't prove if you've got screwed remember that and remember too if you are in anywhere of Australia right now I dare say that if you're in Western Australia you wouldn't think of going there maybe you might be don't there is it's only a matter of time before this community comes under siege and it's going to get nasty the more people that are there the more people that are at risk it's not going to have a good outcome if you think that they're going to leave all these people to be a troublemaker to continue being a troublemaker they're actually looking at setting up as a political party as well <laughs> no they're controlling this agenda they've got a story going on and they are a legitimate risk and threat at this stage they're being monitored but everything just changed in June when they took down that for sale sign and they started going full head with bringing in the investors and the people that creates an escalated risk for those monitoring that threat and the government will be monitoring them there's no ifs ands or buts about it they are watched you've got more hope of being your little Joe blog down the road on your own than of thinking that standing together in this community is going to you're going to survive and that's where I keep thinking of um, even though it, <laughs> um, it's not a religious cult I keep thinking of David Koresh you know it's not going to be nice I mean even though they're prepared for opposition and I do know that um, tribal people have got a whole collection of guns that they've just gone and buried so I dare say that they've passed that you know, handy hint on or whether they got it from people because you know well it couldn't be a tribal condition they never had guns did they so you have to imagine that there's a lot of guns buried around in places they go back on a regular basis they're in sealed containers so that you know they don't dirty rust up and they're clean so ultimately you know if the cops come on and raid your property they can't find any illegal weapons but you've got them if you need them and police go in they think they don't have any and that's what they're banking on is that police think that they are unarmed so the first assault they do on the place they will go in with lesser numbers and they will encounter armed resistance which they didn't anticipate and the next time they come back is when it's going to get worse because you know you can only bury so much ammo and as you can see these hills can can you can start to these um, military exercises that they do up at Kanungra 
they are trained to sweep the land to to work in these you know harsh environments and the heat as well because that's a very big stress factor especially in summer is the stress and the heat from it so I do anticipate that nothing's going to happen probably until the end of the year if, if at this place they'll just let things go on because there's you know right now they've got other things to worry about and hurting people and getting everything I mean they need to pretty much get Victoria put in place before they can start putting it across the rest of Australia they're ready to do it and they're monitoring all the situations but they're not ready to move on a lot of them yet so um yeah this is just a heads up to anyone as i hear you know people leave comments about oh you know i need to get out of victoria it's like well there is nowhere to go that you're going to be safe really you cannot hide there is nowhere to hide and that's part of the problem people have been hiding from the truth for years they have let it fester and build into something that is a beast so uncontrollable that when it does come out into the open you know what do people do about it well it's because you ignored it you call people conspiracy theorists you ignored the things that were going on around you because some idiot online that's got lots of followers or is an influencer told you how to think well you poor dumb sheep you know that you can't think for yourself so you've got no one to blame but yourself for the situation you're in now and quite frankly if it wasn't for all you dumb people those that knew this was coming well we wouldn't be in this situation if you just got your act together and smartened up but I also know that's been harsh because if we all woke up at the same time too much would change at once and we'd all fall apart it needs to be done gradually so the awakening process of the masses is a gradual process and I understand that each will come to their own awakening if that's what they're meant to do and I do understand that there will be a lot of people that are not meant to awaken they will still hold that <laughs> that narrative that the government wants everyone to believe but you don't have to worry about those because even though they're the ones that have created the situation in their ignorance they are now going to become part of the minority and they are soon going to disappear because even the government you know once they've served their purpose the government get rid of you if you have served your purpose to convince people and it's not working anymore you're no no good so all of the sheep will just be sent off to be turned into mutton you know if you can't be fleeced if you can't be used you meet off to the abattoirs you're going to be eaten so your survival if you are, have been ignoring and not awakening to these things your survival is at risk more than anybody else's that may be put at jeopardy because of all the ignorance that allowed all this stuff to become not only entrenched in Australia but the world I mean years ago when I found out about pedophiles I just in my mind I tried to understand how could someone do that and no matter how hard I tried I could not get inside that person's mind and in my head you know what I thought no normal person does that there is you know even murderers and people like that you can get inside their head and you can understand these things but no normal person does that who does that and it was one of those things that for years you just don't really think too much about it you know it's there but you it, it's you don't know how to stop it 
But then when you find out why it's still there and who's doing it, you understand that, well, I was right. That who in their right mind does that? No normal person does that. No, it's this whole select group of interbred elites that are so fucked up in the head and they've got these bizarre concepts, really bizarre. They carry out rituals and they have beliefs and it's like, these are people that are running countries. It is mind blowing when you first discover this, that really the only reason that pedophiles exist is because of the elite. It doesn't come from normal people. And if it is done to a normal person and then they turn around and become a pedophile, that's a well-known thing. But this pedophilia, this abuse of children that's part of ritualism is not something that is normal, that normal people do or even think of. I mean, it's crazy. And these are the people making the laws. Now, I've heard more and more people talking about the pedophilia in Australia and how it's been covered up. And it has been. It is rampant worldwide. It is a huge black market for the elite. It is hugely profitable worldwide. And for the same reasons that politicians uh, are vulnerable and controlled by a higher power, and I'm not talking about God or anything, I'm talking about you know the elite, is because they are put in compromising position, um, positions. They are blackmailed, most of them. But then they wouldn't even really need to be blackmailed because most of them are actually born and raised in these environments and they're sick from the word they're raised by the same sick people that pass on the same sick traditions. And they even perform some of these sick abuses on their own children. This is how sick they are. And these are the people that are, have got all the money and all the power and control in the world. So of course it doesn't come out. And I didn't realise how bad it was until I heard someone the other week talk about 39 suppression orders. That means that 39 convicted pedophiles are hiding behind friends who have had the power to get a suppression order put in place to keep their name out of the public. That's wrong. If that person is that well known and they have committed a crime that bad that they want it suppressed for, we should know about it. There should be no such thing as a suppression order. Unless it's a suppression order to actually suppress the name of minors. That's all. Or to suppress the name of innocent parties or individuals. Not to suppress the names of the guilty. You cannot hide the crimes of others under a suppression order. But apparently, you can. How does that happen in a legal system? And again, this is why I keep saying about the legal system and how everybody's saying that you can now go and fight it this way and the other. Well, the courts have been fairly well operating during this time. But I also noticed um, there was something I was looking up one day. I couldn't access it um, online for a whole day. And that made me stop and think, well, yeah, they've closed down Parliament, you know, for a certain amount of time. And I wonder how many other things. They obviously hadn't closed down the courts. 
or they're not having as many people going through or they're perhaps doing them by telephone, I don't know, but the process is still going on. But there's going to be a stage where you will not be able to access the courts. Whether it's online or going there physically, you will not be able to access them. So your attempt to remedy yourself in the legal system is going to be denied you. And all they have to do is say, look, you know, we've had um, threats made or whatever. I mean, <laughs> I'm not even going to try and come up with how they're going to do it. They will. They will find a way to temporarily close the access to the courts. There will be some kind of justification. And like with the two weeks, you know, just to flatten the curb, it will be something that will end up being ongoing. So basically there will be no avenues open for people to even try and get legal remedy, to try and prove their point in a corrupt legal system. I suppose you might be lucky enough if you got to court before all that happened that you might get a good judge because there are good judges out there and some judges that don't actually want to put their ass on the line by giving a judgment that would show that they're biased and that, you know, it could wreck their career. I mean, every time a judge makes a decision, it could be the one that wrecks his career. So he's going to be very careful about what he does. So if he makes a decision, it's going to be based upon only what the law can allow him to do like in the case that I saw with this poor woman that because she could not access behind that veil of an anonymity of the discretionary trust she couldn't prove anything and even though the claims made uh, in April this year on video by this guy that oh we we offered her five times in open court her money back well, why would you offer money back to her if apparently it wasn't even you she gave the money to? Because it was, as I said, that you can't prove it on paper because it's all hidden behind a discretionary trust. That's why I say you listen hard and long enough and just hope that people right, ask the right questions and sooner or later... I'll tell you what, this guy's got ego. His ego about how good and how easy and... Although he did admit it, you know, it wasn't a resounding victory. Resounding? Yeah. Even the judge said how shonky your setup was. <laughs> but because this poor woman couldn't produce the stuff that she needed to show that, you won. And the fact that you could pay for expensive lawyers and she couldn't. She had to wait for pro bono lawyers or defend herself. Yeah, that's why my last video was called David and Goliath because <laughs> when you've got millions and millions of dollars at your fingertips and you can afford to spend tens of thousands of dollars going to a solicitor to pick on some little old woman you've just ripped off, who apparently it wasn't you that ripped off, it was the people next door, but even though you still own that place, it wasn't you, it was them, but you did offer her, her money back five times in court. Yeah, double dutch. No wonder they were under investigation by the police, by APSIC. And as he said, they couldn't prove or find anything. Well, no. And he said that with a big smile on his face too, because... That was exactly how they'd set it up, that they couldn't find anything. I guarantee you they didn't find any of the guns either. They were buried around the place. I, I tell you, they'd have a shit ton of them. But don't take my word for it. Buy into the place. And sit back, enjoy nature for a bit, before all hell breaks loose. There are a couple of personalities here that... Mm, I can not only see how they're con men, how they're really, you know, arrogant in their opinion that you've got to hold this opinion and work it this way or we're just going to come against you, you know. And one naysayer or troublemaker and 
this guy that set up this community and that did this video back in, in April accused this one singular woman that had been ripped off for everything that she got of causing all this trouble for everybody else in the community and causing them to lose everything that they had. Now how could one woman who's complaining about getting ripped off cause all the other people that were in the community to get ripped off? How? Started renting because the agreement had to change and the legalities of it hadn't been quite set up again even though they were still hiding in this discretionary trust they had to move these things around because you know shit was going down and the person that had originally planned to get the finance to pay out the final amount after they'd got the 500,000 up um, this Mark Darwin according to the judgment he went to get the balance of the money and he was denied the loan so he couldn't get the money so somebody else within that structure went and did it and set it up and it's got a different name but it's the same people same deal but you can't prove it anyway because they are there uh, the businesses that are named uh, what was it Zillman Zilla land or something some of the uh, names actually aren't registered even though they were mentioned in the court documents and I find that interesting because um, the court um, in using a business name or a, um, a company name is referring to an entity so that entity must exist for the court to refer to it but I haven't actually found a, um, one connection some of them aren't even registered but I did find something very interesting about the Sphinx Rock Cafe that it isn't it's a family partnership uh, I think it was Squire can't remember that's been operating since since 2004 and there's been absolutely no changes at all whatsoever to the Sphinx Cafe ownership and yet I've heard how it is said that income is coming in from the Sphinx Rock Cafe. So in saying that, if the ownership of the cafe hasn't changed and money is coming in from the Sphinx Rock Cafe, well then one can only assume that the owners are also members of the discretionary trust. And as I said, it's they've hidden it well. They've, I've uh, in my debt collection days, I've really, I actually got the cases nobody else wanted. You know, the the people they couldn't find. They said, since you seem to be able to be so good at finding these people, do you want to give this person a go? And sometimes I was successful, and sometimes I wasn't. But you can get this when you start looking into things you can get this picture of how someone is trying to like especially with a company when you get a you go to search a company and it's it's not a, no people there it's another company and then you go to that company and it's another company you then know that if if it's not a big company that you've started with what they're trying to do is create a paper trail to then end up leading somewhere where it's hidden behind something or there is no legal accountability and that's the whole aim of doing this going through all these different steps to avoid accountability they've done it in this community as well as to avoid um, tax evasion I mean paying taxes to be able to earn money and charge money like they intend setting up businesses down the front but if all of those profits are going into a business that is a discretionary fund and you don't know what they're making in it you can't be taxed on something that you don't know that they're making and this is what I'm getting at is that it's all set up to hide and bring everything back to them to create a wealth an abundance for themselves and deny the rest of the Australian government and everything but still enjoy you know 
your tax benefits, like if you did happen to have put in a tax return because you've got a tax file number, you've got a, a Medicare number, you've got a CRN number with Centrelink, we all have, just like we've got birth certificate numbers. So when these people say that nobody knows who they are, nobody knows who they are on paper that can be proven in a court. But you, you know, whether you can prove it or not, you know who the people are. Cops know who they are, I guarantee you. They think they're gonna get away with it. Mount warning, people should actually listen to that. Parts of the setup and there were three distinct entities set up to manage the property, the discretionary trust, and the business arm that was public that was owned by the discretion, uh, no, the incorporated association, sorry, that was anonymous members. So the only public face that could be searched was um, Wollumbin Horizons. And the people behind that are an incorporated association and anonymous so you'll never find out who's behind them. Again, it's all double talk. People are going to go into a situation if they go to this northern New South Wales area, just out of Ukai, along the Mount Burrell. And coming up. Now they, yeah, here we go. Haven't got there yet. Of course, I haven't. Their claim is that they own the town. So, if the Sphinx Rocks Cafe is part of Mount Burrell and it hasn't um, changed ownership th since two thousand and four, the only conclusion that can come from that, well, there's two conclusions: one, they're exaggerating and lying, or two that the Sphinx Rock Cafe owners joined the community and are now funneling profits through that community. And you can't see it. And they'll be making money tax-free. They get the public business, but it's all tax-free. So I did start off to try and bring all of it together in a, in a modern context. There is something going to go down with this community in the future. I'm not saying for sure that it's going to happen. I really hope it doesn't. I really hope I'm wrong. Really do. But I mean, shit. Even I didn't know how many people had guns buried everywhere. I mean, you know, in a lot of respects, I did live in a bubble fairly innocent, you know, didn't understand the extremes that people go to. And they bury guns. You think that Australians are not armed? Guess again. You know, just because the cops couldn't come in and find them, you'd have to bury, um, dig up the whole of Australia to find the rest of the guns that you never found. Because there's a shit ton of them out there all over Australia that you're never going to find or you're never going to see until they're pointing at you. The ones that had guns never gave them up, they just hid them and hid them well. So I hope my naive side is going to win on this that it won't mean bloodshed and it won't mean loss for a lot of people. Because what happened for this woman when she bought into this community that started all this legal battle off is that even though you don't have council approval, and it's well known, it's, but you can still move on to the land. You just got to keep dodging if the council come round and make it not look like people are living there. You know, there's a game you play with them to make it look like it. So everybody had been playing this game and um, then one day they got caught. Council kicked them off, said that there was no approval for habitation and kicked them off the land. And that's when everything started going wrong. 
And I'm only assuming this because all the articles as part of the judgment have been pulled and you can't search them on Google. Again, part of the judgment that these people that set up this community insisted upon. And so they all got kicked off the land, officially. And I suppose she decided that, you know, that considering that it was more like I'm I'm lending you the money until you get up and set of, up officially, she just said, you know, I want to get out of it, give me my money back. And she was basically told no. And so this is where, when it comes down to it, this age pensioner that actually has got health issues as well has um, asked for her money back, said no she's then tried to take on you know not only the real as uh, the solicitor that took the money but the, the guys that um, have done it to her and she's tried to warn other people about it now the guy that's currently offering these you know, lots at this community is saying five times they offered her money back. She wanted her money back in the first place. Do you think that they would have had to have asked five times? I think after the first offer, if she didn't accept it, the court would say, well, look, remedy, remedy has been offered, take it and piss off. So if that remedy had been offered, to put her back into a position of where she was before it happened. It, it wouldn't have been offered to her five times. And why would someone that apparently had nothing to do with it offer five times her the money back? Words out of his own mouth. I'm not saying this. He said it. In association with the same developer, A.B., that was connected with both places. And as I said, Bulla Bulla and Night Bulla Bulla went on to become Nightcap. There's an ABR there for it that shows clearly that. Good place to stick it. Not on the town. So these are the assets that this community claimed to be in charge of. As well as the caravan park. They own the town. Can't see the cafe behind me. And yes, as I said, that the business register shows that nothing has changed other than um, the GST activity. It was cancelled at one stage. Clearly, they were doing. Uh, less business so they cancelled the GST and then uh, it came back into effect again so that's the only thing that's changed on there there's been no change of names it's still a, a family partnership it is not owned by a business or a community or anything so if the claim has been made that they own this whole town there's only two conclusions it's a lie well, the people that own that cafe are now behind a discretionary trust and an incorporated association that are part of the community. But you wouldn't be surprised. You wouldn't be surprised at all. So, I'm just going to pause that for a sec. So, if you're in Australia, I have to tell you that overseas where I've seen hundreds of thousands of people come out in the streets, no masks, standing up, thank you, beautiful, wonderful sight to see. And I can tell you at 12pm I am going to be outside Parliament House, down Salamanca Market, might even go to the market beforehand and do a little bit of shopping see what's there anyway. I asked my daughter if Salamanca's open and she said yes and I said well do you know how they've changed it and she said well apparently you've got to wash your hands between stalls. I said what? I said you, all you'd ever be doing is washing your hands. What do you mean you've got to wash your hands between stalls and she said oh, oh I don't know. 
I said, well, they're not sticking that poisonous crap on my hands. No way, so, no. Besides, they offer the hand lotion in so many places I go to and I just look at it, wait for someone to be looking at me, looking at it, and I laugh and go, Pff. just to let other people know, I think it's stupid. As I'll tell you about those hand sanitizers, I got a little bit OCD after my son was born, my first child. I was constantly washing my hands with um, antibacterial soap. And I had a huge dermatological reaction. It destroyed all the natural bacteria on in your skin. It uh, started to crack, go really red raw just from using antibacterial soap. I never used it again after that. I mean, I never used it before then and I've never been that kind of a person. I was just sort of a new mother and OCD about it. And I learned that, oh, it was dreadful. Both my hands, the, the back of my hands, I couldn't bend them. My knuckles were all cracked and, and like, like all exposed veins everywhere, all these red, yeah, not very nice. And when they give you that hand sanitizer, I mean, seriously, if you can't wash your hands with water, don't touch anything. Just stick that muck on there. It feels like when you put gel on your hands to put it through your hair and you don't wash your hands afterwards, that's what it feels like. And it's kind of the same thing. So you're not gonna get me to stick that crap on my hands or wear a mask, well, I think if it ever came down to that, I might go to the doctor and just say that, you know, all that surgery that you've done across my face there and how it's all numb up to my eye and down my cheek and there's no way I can wear a mask over the top of that. I just can't. It, it, um, it feels... It, it hurts me. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's something to do with that. I mean, I've got a very legitimate excuse. I mean, it's, it's a reason that I'm not showing my face. You know, I've got the... <laughs> I used to have a face that people might like to look at, but now it's not. Uh, it's scarred. Public doctors, plastic surgeons, you know, they're not very good. And when it's on your face, they can turn you into a bit of a horror show. If you're somewhere in Australia and you can get to one of these places on Saturday, I won't say it's your last chance, but um, you need to, to show up. And if you're not showing up, you're part of the problem. It'd be interesting to find out who didn't bother. Who didn't think that what's going on, you know, should be stood up against. But there are an incredible amount of people that are still living in this bubble and this illusion. They're watching the news every day. They're not looking for alternative narratives or stories or understanding, so they're just sitting back and waiting. And one day they're going to realise that they've been waiting for something that's never going to happen. So we don't need to worry about those ones that are still waiting. If you can get up, if you can be there, and please, this is a peaceful protest. There will be no violence by anyone that's showing up. And as has been said, if there is any, it'll probably be because of undercover cops. And we know they're there everywhere. Everyone's had encounters with undercover cops. Don't sit back and take videos all the time, please. You can put yourself out there a little bit more. There are other people that are out there. There's an old guy, 77 years of age, he's, well, 76 years of age, he's been arrested because he wanted people to come to this protest. He's arrested, he's going to court, and he's charged with inciting this, which is contrary to the Chief Health Officer's instructions or some other crap that they've made up, that he, for an hour, chewed their ear off and gave them a wake-up call. Good on him. 
And that's what you can do too. Do you know that the only opportunity you actually get to stand up against this is to actually get arrested? You can call them out on their law. That's assuming that they don't shut down the law system so that you can get there. But then again, if, if they shut down the law system, they can only ever have an accusation. They can't have a charge against you. So nothing's going to come of that either. You've got to risk something. If You can't just think that life is handed to you on a platter. Or that, you know, because I can go to work and earn money that I'm earning my way in life. No, you're not. You're a human being. And you've got to start acting like one. You don't stand and watch while someone else is being harassed. You don't video it. You do something. And this is a peaceful gathering but if anyone does try to make it violent we need to find a peaceful way to stop them even if it was just a matter of we see someone getting angry and nasty or starting to cause trouble or there may be 20 of us could just all stand around and just say calm down quiet just to, I don't know just to not something that we can do to take away what we know they're going to do to try and make a drama out of it. Now, I'm not going to have to worry about it here in Hobart. I don't think there's going to be any um, plants. And I do think that, like all the process of, um, protests I've seen outside Parliament House to do with, with um, issues of strong concern in the community, and I'm not talking about the BLM protest either. That <laughs> barely any hardly anyone showed up to that that's actually not of importance in our community you know discussing whether color is going to be important or not environment freedom of rights and expression and the ability to live your life um, within certain freedoms these are always been issues that um, Tasmanians are going to stand on the steps of Parliament House in their front little garden there we all gather down at the waterfront, overflows out into the streets, into the Salamanca area, and a lot of people will come over from Salamanca too, and hopefully maybe even wake up a couple of people that day. So wherever you are, step out, show up. That's the least you can do for yourself and for everybody else. It's interesting to notice that there's nothing in Darwin. I think I'd said it on a previous interv um, interview video that um, Darwin wouldn't actually be really an issue because it's already so heavily militarised with not only Australia but US military there and it's pretty isolated and remote and easy to, to block off. Yeah, I just... Why isn't there something going on in Darwin? Or in Alice, Alice Springs? I thought when I saw Alice, I thought that was going to say Alice Springs, but it said, no, Alice Street in Brisbane. And it's like, where's the Northern Territory? But anyway, that's it for today. I'm not going to carry on anymore. I think I've, well, I started off on one thing. And as usual, I can never stay on the subject and I wander off. And, and even half the things that I plan to say that, well, they don't, I don't say them. So until I come up with the next load of um, <laughs> what I didn't say, I'll say bye and yeah, catch you later, see you next time.